Let's return to Faith Life Church for more from the Faith Over Fear series. Now on Fixing the Money Thing. Now through this series, we're going to talk to you how to get free from fear, how to overcome fear, how to deal with fear. We're going to cover that. But right now, I'm trying to lay a groundwork that, you know what, fear has pushed you in a corner. You're bigger than you think you are. Did you know that? Your potential is greater than you think you are. You can be doing great things because God is in you. And fear tries to tell you that you're incapable, that you're not lovely, you're, you know, you're, you're an idiot. You're a, you know, he's going to start naming all these adjectives about your life which don't match up what Jesus says about you. And you've got to change the picture. We'll talk about that. But here we have a story by video of a lady that found herself in a desperate situation, and she had to find out what God said about her life at that point. Let's listen to Teresa's story. Thanks for joining us. I have good friend Teresa Heinerman here with me tonight, and she and I were doing some TV taping, and we just wanted to be able to share with you the encouragement tonight that Teresa received that helped her during a really dark time in her life when things went wrong, all the plans and dreams she had uh, fell apart, and she was devastated, but how she came out of that, because I believe it's going to encourage you tonight. Uh, Teresa, first of all, just tell us the place that you were at, what was going on, when you just felt like you couldn't make it any longer? Well, I was 40 years old, and my husband, um, he had been going, we'd been in leadership position at church together, and he ended up leaving, got into sin, and um, I was left alone with three kids. That was pretty devastating. It was never very, picture, very, right? no. You've been a stay-at-home mom how many years? I'd been, I stayed at home with my kids and homeschooled them. Um, I think our daughter was 16 years old at the time. And, and I was three teen yes. Kids. I had an eleven year old, a twelve year old, and a sixteen year old. And I'd mm -hmm. stayed at home and homeschooled them and um, ended up in a place I never ever dreamed I'd be. You know, we talk about feelings and, and situations and circumstances <clears throat> in people's lives. Initially what was your reaction? In all honesty, I just mm -hmm. wanted to curl up somewhere in a corner and, and die. I really did not want to go on. And even my kids, I think, because I had been um, kind of a timid, um, kind of beaten down kind of person, they, I think they probably kind of wondered what was going to happen too. And that's why I had to make the choice to, you know, I had three kids and I needed to make sure that my kids were going to be okay. I mean, I had no other option. The only place I knew to run was to the Lord. and. Um, I just got in the Word. I had scriptures posted everywhere on my refrigerator and on my mirror because getting up in the morning was really hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I felt like it was all my fault that I ended up where I was because I had been an insecure person. And sometimes when you're insecure, you pull on that other person. And if they're insecure, then, you, you know, it turns into not a good situation. Right. So thought that I had a good relationship with the Lord, but I came to the realization that I had it backwards. I had God here and my husband here. And so everything really, truly fell apart. That's when I really um, grew in my relationship with God. And that's when I started. For the first time in my whole life, I was 40 years old and I I, all my life, because of insecurities, I'd always had to have a man in my life, I thought, to complete me. And I was 40 years old, single, hadn't worked outside of the home, and for the first time in my life, I had peace and contentment, and I knew that God was going to take care of me. Whether I had a husband or I didn't have, he was my husband. And that was the first time in my life, in all honesty, that I, I had total peace and confidence in God. And you could have blamed God. So many people have had bad things happen. Uh, they blame God, then their children do, and everything unravels. From the yeah. marriage, it just, everything goes wrong. But because you turned to God, uh, and I know the church family supported and got around, yes. encouraged you, but your children did not turn from God. And they did not become a statistic. And no. all three of them are sh serving God today. They are. And they, now you've got grandchildren. And you've been, yeah. you're remarried. I to... have a stepson. He's serving the Lord. He went on his first missions trip last year. And he's back in children's ministry, sewing back there. And um, yeah, God turned it. God took something that he hates 
and he turned it around and worked it to our good. He promises mm -hmm. to do that if we let him. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And you know, a lot of times the thing we fear when we if we face it with God, all of a sudden, the, the, to me, the worst thing, when you get married, the thing you think is, I'd never want to get a divorce. And if you're insecure, that is always your greatest fear. And sometimes, you know, we have to watch our words. We have to watch what we speak. And, um, you know, looking back, I wish I'd prayed more for my, for my husband then, and I would have done things a lot different. But I didn't know. But I did, you know, through all of this, I grew, and now I do know. I cover my husband daily in prayer. I know what he's out there against, you know, up against, and I know what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to destroy homes, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, we see that everywhere we turn. Yeah. And uh, after you were in that situation with the kids and everything, uh, I was so proud of you because fear had, in the past, really been. Probably your stronger companion. Yes. And, you know, fear of the acronym fit, false evidence that appears real. You were living more in that state than you were in a, a state of faith. I was, I was more fearful and I was kind of ruled, my emotions kind of controlled me. But you're me. not that person today. No. You're not. No. You faced fears. I know uh, we were, we had you guys go with us on family vacation. Yeah. And uh, tell a little bit about the story with us riding the roller coaster, and you face that fear. You, I remember you making that decision, I will face my fears. I was afraid of being alone, you're yep. facing that. You're gonna go ahead and face all the other fears too and conquer them, so yes. tell me a little bit about it. You knew some of the fears I was battling. So we were on vacation with you and we were close to Cedar Point. So you kind of gave me a little nudge and um, you said, let's go, before we go home, let's go to Cedar Point and we're gonna go on the uh, Millennium. <laughs> So it was a rainy day, it was a cold day, and we got to Cedar Point. There were no lines to wait in because we, it was rainy and just a nasty day, and we were all lined up in our trash bags and sweatshirts to keep us dry. And um, we went on the Millennium, and I screamed and probably squeezed <laughs> your hand so tight. I remember that. Closed my eyes, and we did it one time, and then we got to the uh, the bottom, and Pastor Gary said, now you need to do it with your eyes open. Yeah, you said, so we if went I don't do back. it now, I'll never do we it again. Went, I'm doing it right now, right and I'm so up. proud of you. You went right yes. back and wrote it a second time. Yeah. And I saw you face other fears. What other fears Didn't did you face? Didn't know how to swim, so one summer at, or one day at your house, um, you had me over there tr teaching me how to swim, <laughs> which was very entertaining for the kids. They we were all on lined dry up. Land, over, land, yes. we? we were on dry land, and you were showing me what to do, and all the kids were sitting over there just laughing. And, um, and tell me about what you're doing today. What are you doing today? You've come this journey with God, and He's been faithful, hasn't He? Yes, He Even has. when men aren't faithful, when people aren't faithful, whatever gets shaken in our life, God is still faithful, right? Yes. So tell, tell us a little bit about what, what things that you've learned and what you would tell someone tonight who is facing fear or their world's being shaken. Well, my husband and I, um, because he went through a similar thing and he was attending our church at the time and that's where I met him. Um, we do a small group here at our church for divorce care, which we've had some awesome testimonies. We've had two marriages restored. We have um, one of the gentlemen, he's up on praise and worship team every mm -hmm. week and uh, that's kind of like that's kind of like my devil, here's your payback for yes. what you did to me. Yes, that's that is, good. That is, anytime we can, you know, share with somebody or, um, you know, what God's done for us, it's kind of like a black eye in the, in the devil's face, mm -hmm. so, yeah. And you're free today. You know, yes. we keep walking in levels and levels of freedom. So if you could say to someone tonight what, they, what, what you would recommend them to do if they find themselves in a tough spot, pressures there, hard times, what would you say to them? Go ahead. Um, first of all, get in, a, get in a good church and surround yourself with people that love the Lord and people that are gonna stand on the word with you. Mm -hmm. And don't give up, no matter how much your flesh is screaming, don't give up. Um, it's, it's not an option, it's not an option. And God has great things. I mean, he gets such glory out of taking things that the enemy meant for our harm and turning them for our good. 
and when he restores, it's always better than before. And my kids and my family, um, I believe we're an example of that because our lives are so much better than before. So quitting isn't an option because God gets all the glory, so you keep going. That's so, good. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. Amen. Amen. One thing that we had to help Teresa is you got to open your eyes. Now, an analogy. Many of you may have your eyes closed. You've stopped dreaming. You've stopped seeing the future. You've allowed fear to, sell, to dictate to you who you are, what you can do. And God is saying, listen, open your eyes. You got to see what I say about you. You got to make some decisions here. You can stay hidden. You can stay hidden. But like the lady at the house, you can't get enough deadbolts. You can't make concessions with fear. Just stop eating that, stop doing that, stop doing that. You know? Well, the Novocaine shot, well, then Bell's palsy. I don't know what would have come next. It's not too late for you. See, you got the authority. Somehow the enemy has lied to you through fear to make you back up because he knows if you ever found out who you really are, you could do some damage. It's like driven our life and all these areas we grew in now become our story that are setting others free. Like Teresa, she's taking her experience, taking that story and setting others free. See your story, you can go out there and help people understand how you got free. <laughs>